this now. We'll do the same with that there. The middle pins look like they're rusted to me and it's holding the pads a bit. So, um, show you when I'm done. Oh, sorry, as I get on. Right, guys, just got to the back. I've pulled that out of the brake caliper. And as you can see, it's pretty pitted and rusty and uh, the pads aren't moving freely enough. So we'll clean that off. I've took off this guard off the bottom of the disc. There's no need for that bloody thing. I've never had them on any of my bikes before and it just keeps dirt close to the disc when you want the dirt to fly off. That's what people don't, don't seem to understand with these these things. Uh, same with this on my original bike there by the front sprocket. You want to keep that on but take everything else off so the dirt flies off the chain not keeps in there. So for instance on this one it's on there look. So that's going to be coming off and we'll keep the one behind because that will get clogged up with shit and it'll just rub and fuck your chain up. So um, these are just things I learnt over the years when I was doing this game and uh, I see a lot of people don't don't use the things I, I learned to be honest like this chain here is it an o-ring chain I'm not sure I always, first thing I always used to do was always buy an o-ring chain o-ring chain will, won't stretch won't stretch hardly at all and it'll last for ages it's a lot more expensive um, this does look like an o-ring chain to be fair so um they do create a little bit more drag it takes a little bit of power out of the bike but you won't have it breaking so um, there we are so we'll clean this thing off a bit of sandpaper and things and put that back in right if you can see here now I've actually dressed down the disc with a grinder caught it a little bit hard there but never mind they got a, a lip right on the edge here on the inside and the outside and that's why the wheel was a bit difficult coming off because the disc got grabbing on the pads so if we got this up smooth again so this should be okay we'll get this back brake working perfect and if you look see not much in the way of grease have been hitting this beer in here it's pretty um, dry that one so we'll sort that out now Here we are. Running a lot better now. Wasn't doing that before, was it? So once it's um, used a bit, that should be better. Right, everybody. We've done the clutch. We've just done all the suspension, greased all the suspension. Done the rear and the front axles. Uh, Cleaned them the bar off with a pads run on and greased that. Just got a new clutch cable because you'll notice the old clutch cable was frayed down here. Um, and also, can't remember if I remember mentioned this. This is if you've got four strokes, very crucial thing with four strokes is getting the ear screw set right. And it's very, very awkward with a normal screwdriver. And they've made this add-on now. They're a little bit pricey, they're about 16 quid each. But you you unscrew the screw at the bottom of the carb and you can change it with this and then you can just flick it with your thumb then to get it in the, the right position. So you, if you've got it like two turns out and it's a little bit lean or rich, you can just flick it back very easy. Uh, with a screwdriver it's damn near impossible to get at. And it's something that's so crucial at the, cause of, the of the running on the four stroke. It's hard to start when you've got it set wrong. The pick up, perhaps if you adjust this little shade one way or the other, you can get it to pick up quicker, being a bit leaner or a bit richer. It's very crucial to do. And I don't think it's that hard to change. So um, we'll try and change that and we'll change the clutch cable now on the CRF 250 and we'll do the CRF 450 for this as well. Right, we've got the clutch cable fitted. Bit of a tip from somebody who used to do a lot of this game. Always zip tie everything to make sure it doesn't come loose. You won't. You think you won't need to do it, but you bloody will. A little bit of a zip tie around there, stopping the clutch cable come loose. Same up here, always root 
the table, the cable, in the best way possible, and then your clutch will be a lot uh, easier. Take your time to route it so it there's no kinks in it. Zip tie it so it'll move freely, and then you've got a clutch that will move very, very easy. You know, this is a one finger pull, you know. Uh, things like that make a big difference when you're racing motocross because you get arm pump if you're having to pull the clutch and it's too hard. So we'll put some oil on that, some WD-40 on it. Um, when we've got a bit of time, I've got a cable oiler here somewhere. So the next thing is we're going to attack is to put this air screw in the bottom of the car. This is going to be an absolute twat of a job because you've got, only got two fingers width to, to work and you can't really twist the carb much so I won't video this because it's such a twat of a job so uh, we'll do that on both bikes I don't know if you can see that I've got a bit of a mirror under you that there is what we're trying to get out that screw there and it's impossible to get out the only way I can do it at the moment is I've made little allen key and made it into a screwdriver to go in like that it's a pig and it's just at the bottom of the carb now you're supposed to adjust that and like I told you it's such a pain in the arse to get at so I've got a mirror here now showing you what I'm trying to get at very very awkward indeed so we're gonna try it and get that in there and unscrew it and like I said I can't show you me doing it sorry because I can barely get my hands in there so um that's what you have to do. And then we'll put that other screw in there then, okay? Well, that is a little pig that come out. Oh God, you can see I've dropped the thing off the end there now. This has been a real nightmare. I've had a hell of a job to get that out. And that little thing comes off the end here, look. And there's a little rubber thing on the end of it as well you've got to put on. So this is supposed to be a five minute job, easy task. In no way is this easy. Right, tubes, if you can see there now, there is that adjuster. You see? Now, I showed you that pissant little screw which you had to go and ask about with. With this adjuster, you just put your finger in, twist it. Very, very easy, and you can do half a click, quarter of a click, or whatever. Why on earth they never came made with that, I will never know. But that was a real ball break of a job to get that out. Real ball break. Here we are, here are the two screws. That's the one that came with the 450. This is the replacement, and here's a little gizmo as it go on the end. So you've got the spring, washer top and bottom, and a little O-ring to go on the right in the point. So we'll screw that on, and hopefully this will all work. I think if you've been following me, you'll realize uh, I've been doing up this CRF 250. It's a 2005 model. Uh, it's just had the top end of the motor done. When and fully done up, so it's a brand new top end in it. But it had a quite a few things wrong with it, and that's why I got it quite cheap. Uh, first of all, the clutch wasn't working correctly, and I've showed you in a previous video how the clutch basket and all worn, and I've sorted that. Put a new clutch in it, changed all the oils, uh, stuck a new rear tire on it, greased everything up, because everything was quite dry on it. All the linkage, all the wheels, everything. But there was one thing, that uh, was wrong with it that I tried to sort out and I, I broke. The subframe was bent here, uh, one direction. So when the wheel was going up, it was catching the exhaust all the time. So I tried to bend it back with a ratchet strap and various methods and it did start to come back, but then it just cracked and it broke. I got it back to where it should be, but I didn't feel happy just welding it, welding it, because that is a, a big part of the bike. And if that goes when you're on it, you God knows what could happen. So I didn't feel comfortable welding it. So I looked around and you would never believe it. I've got a straight original CRF subframe for 45 quid off eBay. Absolutely perfect. So, um, when this is put on that bike now, this bike will be 100% straight and true. Everything is going to be working spot on. So I put a lot of work into that bike. There's my original one. Absolutely beautiful. Not a problem with it. 
but when I bought this one, it had quite a lot wrong with it. So I had this quite cheap, and I put a lot of work into this. This should be a spot on now, like a brand new bike. Uh, new clutch cable on it as well, because the clutch pull was very, very hard. Cable was rooted in a stupid position, and it was starting to fray in the middle in one place. So clutch is as light as this one now. So, um, oh, of course, another thing we did was we got the angle grinder on the discs because they, they had wore down and I got a ridge on them so there was no feel in the brakes. Also, here, the place where the brake pads run wasn't right. So, lots of small things on this that have been done and now she feels nice. So, when we get this on, she'll be straight and true. And that's one thing I cannot stand when you're riding a bike is when things don't look right. If you don't feel quite confident in your bike, it's just, an, there's no point in riding it. So um, when you walk to the back of your bike and you look at the rear of the bike, that wants to be level. And it can send everything out. It can send your riding out, it can send everything out. So a bit of advice for anybody going to buy a bike. First thing you look for is a rear end. I knew this one was gone, but um, you will want to fix that, especially on a four stroke because that exhaust, if it's out, you'll have a job to work, get it working correctly so it doesn't hit it. Two stroke is different, but because um, there's a smaller exhaust. So I will put this on and then we shall see what she's like.